All right, so um, we're going to talk about a three chamber chest drain. Um, I'm not going to discuss how you put a chest, the tube in the chest cavity. Um, we can do that on another tube, but I'm just going to talk about once the tube's in the cavity, what do you two do with the um, your hose or your plastic piping that comes out of the chest wall here? So if you're by the side of the road on the nullarbor plane and you know, some guy's got a tension, you must always say you fix the tension and then you put it, you find some clean hose pipe and you put that into the chest cavity. What type of drain do you want to attach to that to, um, and what's the purpose of that? Sophia. I guess the purpose is to um, draw out the air between the interpleural space to allow the, um, the lung to expand again. Yep. Um, so you've, all, you've all heard of underwater seal drain, haven't you? Yep. So well, so what's the idea of that? So let's put that here, let's put it in a container. Let's put some water in there. So what's the idea of the underwater seal? Roy. When pressure is high in the uh, pleural cavity and there is extra volume in the pleural cavity, yep. it will be forced out as bubbles. Yeah, and so, they bubble out. so if you've got air and every time you breathe out, you'll bubble away. But in, if you just had a hose sticking out of the chest, every time you breathe in and had negative pressure, it would suck air back in, That's right. creating an endothorax. Good. So Whereas we, the water prevents that. Yeah. So, the river, so, so, yeah. So, when you suck in, water will go in the tube and air won't go in the tube. And when you blow out, um, you know, the, the gas will go out and it won't go back in again. A relevant question is, uh, how far below the chest does the water have to sit? Because if the water's too high, then when you breathe in, you'll actually suck the water into your chest cavity. So um, how far below the um, hole does this, um, so the important distance is this. If the water level is too close to the there in terms of height, then you'll actually suck water back into the pool cavity every time you just take a breath in. I don't know the number, of, but it would have to be the amount of intrathoracic pressure that you can generate. Yep, so but how much intrathoracic pressure can you generate, Dan? Uh, about 15, 20? About 15, 21. Centimetres of water. Yeah, like at normal tidal volume, you just breathing away naturally, about 15 or 20. But if you want to do this, how much pressure could you generate there? Yeah, probably 50 to 100. So if you if you if you really tried hard, um, and you went, you could probably generate you know, 100 centimeters of water pressure. But you know, for you know, regular purposes, just normal breathing. If the patient's on a bed and you put that on the ground, that's about 50 centimeters, and they're very unlikely to suck water back into a pool cavity. So at the side of the road on another ball plane, that's probably more than adequate. It means all the all the you know the heat, the air comes out of the pleural cavity and gets bubbled out. Any blood and muck also gets out into here as well. <coughs> um, but blood and muck can cause a problem because you know it changes the water level here, so it can raise the water level or clot can form in here and you know, get infected and stuff like that. So. If we worry about draining fluid, we have a second chamber. So what's the purpose of the second chamber? Actually, before we go to the, before we go to the um, second chamber, first chamber, assuming we're just draining gas out, we've got the underwater seal here, we've got water here. Do we put a lid on this or not? Um, Sue? I'm going to go with no. No, you're right. Why, why don't you put a lid on it? I don't really know. Well, if, if this is sealed, you can't push well, stuff nice. out of it. So this has to be, this can't have a fixed lid on it. The lid is the water, which is you know, obviously yeah. flexible, and so that when you push air or hemothorax or pneumothorax out of it, it can bubble out. But if you put a lid on it, the, the, the air can't bubble out. So yeah. 
this can't have a lid on it. You can worry about, you know, <coughs> hemothorax or other fluids coming out. You have a second chamber so that the first chamber collects all the fluid and this is a closed container. And then you put a pipe to the second chamber and have fluid there so that any crap just comes in here but doesn't affect the transfer of the um, air to the second chamber where you had the underwater seal. Does that make sense? And again, in terms of making sure you... And, and I guess in theory, it, it makes it difficult to suck water in because even if it, this was too high and you actually sucked water in, water would go back into here rather than back into there. So that's another advantage, I guess, of a two-chamber system. You don't have to worry so much about the height if someone took a really deep breath, all they would do is just suck water into here rather than back into the lungs. So that's your two chamber system. What do we use a three chamber system for? So once again, in a two chamber system, this one doesn't have a fixed lid on it. You have to, you have to let it equilibrate with the air. What does a third chamber do? Filter. What do we sometimes do to chest strains? Check. Swing and bubble. Yeah, swing and bubble. So you can check swing and bubble here because every time you breathe out, he's got to generate, you know, um, 20, 15, 20 centimetres of pressure. So if the water's here, you'll, you'll push down and then, and then when he breathes in, you generate 15 centimetres in the opposite direction. So this will travel up 15 centimetres up, you know, the height of the tube and you know, you'll get that every breath in and out. What, do we, what else do we sometimes do to chest strains to help get the lung to inflate, Laura? I'm not sure about getting the lung to inflate, but maybe having to empty them sometimes mm -hmm. to get them off. Um, Dan? Suction. Suction, yeah. So how do you apply suction? At the wall. Yeah, at the wall. <laughs> and what sort of, how high a level of suction do you want to apply? Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a lot. <laughs> yeah. You don't want it to inflate too quickly. Yeah, and you, you don't want to traumatise the lung, right? So the idea of the third chamber is you can... One, the wall suction is very hard to calibrate. It's very hard to... If you look at the units, it's even like kilopascals or something like that. It's not in centimetres of water. And you probably can't calibrate to you know, 10 centimetres of water or 20 centimetres of water. And you don't want to accidentally apply too much pressure to the system and you know, potentially cause trauma by sucking lung tissue onto your tube or something like that. So the third chamber is about um, being able to control, fine-tune, control the suction. So how that works is... Okay, so what happens is they're all closed off now. Um, suction gets applied here. And this tube determines um, what level of suction you apply to the system. So if you apply, if, if you put 10 centimeters of water here, so this is 10, and there's 10 centimeters of water there and you put five, negative five centimetres of pressure through this tube, what's going to happen to the water level here? So you, you're applying at negative five, 10 centimetres water height here, so there's going to be negative five in the gas here. What's going to happen to the water level in this tube, Sophia? It's fucking out of here, so it won't go down. It'll go down how far? Yeah. Five, five centimetres. centimetres. So, yeah. Good. So that was four, five centimetres. There'll be negative five here. And yeah, and that'll suck it out. Through. There'll be negative five in here. Mm -hmm. That comes, the water level here goes down negative five, and you transfer negative five centimetres of water pressure to the lung. What if you've applied negative ten centimetres of water pressure here, Roy? 
it'll be negative 10 in here. It will, um, it will Where's draw the air in through the second. Not quite, almost, almost. I mean, if you apply exactly the height of the water, then okay. the water level will come right to the bottom of the tube. And that'll be minus 10, so that'll be minus 10 here. The water level here will go down to minus 10. You know, then you transfer minus 10 negative pressure to the lung and try to get the lung to expand a bit more. Now the trick is, what happens if you apply negative 20 here? Okay, so it's the safety valve. Yeah, yeah. So can you see what's happening soon? So once you apply negative 20 here, at negative 10, the water, the, the, the water level's fallen down to the bottom of the tube. So any, you apply any more pressure to that, and instead of it going any lower, it's just gonna bubble in and, and equilibrate here so that the pressure here is always minus 10. Um, again, if you wanted to make, the idea being that if you, if you specifically wanted minus 10 centimeters of water pressure on the lung, you make that height minus 10. And it doesn't matter what you put here, it can be negative 30, negative 40, negative 100, you know, you can put a jet engine in theory on the end of this. It doesn't matter what force you apply to that, provide these tubes are you know, big enough caliber, the difference between that and that height of the water will be made up by this bubbling through and acting as the safety valve. Okay, so that's how the three chamber system works. Now obviously, you know, that's how you do it at the side of the road on the lower wall plane, but obviously, you know, on the ward you've got you know, systems that are all enclosed and, and it probably doesn't quite work like that. They've got valves that are you know, spe specifically calibrated rather than using an underwater seal and height of the wall. But that's the underlying concept. And the, the, the suction portion on the top of the, mm. that, that is, the, is that setting the safety valve? Is that, is that what you're doing with that or is it setting the actual degree of suction? On the chest drain. On the chest drain. Yeah, yeah. So you, there's usually a dial that you can dial mm. five centimeters, ten centimeters, twenty centimeters negative pressure. Um, I don't know exactly how that works mm. in that system. I, I, I suspect it's not using this mechanism. It's not by height of reward. Mm. They probably have like calibrated springs that open up to a point, and so you know if you set it to minus twenty, if you apply more than minus twenty, then. Um, <coughs> the spring will open up to a certain degree and allow a certain pressure through to the system and the rest of it just gets sucked in, sucked in from the outside end. Uh, the other point about this is, just say you wanted to apply negative 20 pressure here, you actually have to put more suction than negative 20 because if you only apply negative 10 here and you put the height of the water as minus 20 thinking that you're applying minus 20 to the lung, this will only fall out to minus 10 and there's only minus 10 flowing through the system. So if you if you if you're using this system, and you and you've got twenty centimeters of water height here, and you're thinking you want to get twenty centimeters of negative pressure on the lung, the suction has to be more than negative twenty, and you have to get bubbling. Otherwise, you're not you're getting something less than negative twenty. Any other questions, queries? Okay.